Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji dimulai. Terdapat beberapa hal yang perlu kami sampaikan terkait tata tertib selama mengikuti kegiatan ini. Kuliah umum ini dilaksanakan secara daring dan juga luring, serta acara ini bisa disaksikan melalui aplikasi Zoom Meeting atau live streaming melalui channel YouTube Umrah. Dan perlu kami sampaikan kepada hadirin yang berada di titik lokasi utama di auditorium untuk tetap menggunakan masker selama acara ini berlangsung. Selanjutnya yang membawa alat komunikasi mulai saat ini dan dengan tidak mengurangi rasa hormat, mohon kiranya mengaktifkan nada dering getar atau silent selama acara ini berlangsung. Dan kepada undangan yang bergabung secara virtual ataupun daring untuk mohon kiranya menonaktifkan speaker dan mengaktifkan kamera selama acara ini dimulai. Pada saat menyanyikan lagu Kebangsaan Indonesia Raya, agar seluruh hadirin dan undangan yang berada di titik lokasi utama untuk kiranya berdiri dalam keadaan siap, sedangkan yang hadir secara daring untuk dapat duduk dengan sikap sempurna. Mahasiswa dan mahasiswi undangan yang berbahagia diminta untuk tidak keluar atau leave dari aplikasi Zoom Meeting sampai dengan acara ini selesai. Demikian disampaikan untuk menjadi perhatian dan diucapkan terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the auditorium of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. The public lecture of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji with the theme Food Revolution Industry 4.0 in Food Security will commence. We would like to invite you to stand up. Singing Indonesian National Anthem. Gentlemen, please be seated. First of all, we would like to thanks to God Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala because we have been given this golden chance to have a public lecture with our international speaker from Republic Polytechnic of Singapore today on Monday, May the 30th, 2022. We would like to invite you to give a warm and a great welcome to the Honorable Dr. Stephen Fong and Mr. Teh Kim Yu from Republic Polytechnic of Singapore and also all the delegations. Our keynote speaker, Bapak Samsul Bahrum, PhD, a senior analyst of Kepulauan Riau Province, the Honorable Rector of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji, Professor Dr. Agung Damar Shakti, DEA, the Honorable Bapak Henki Irawan as our moderator, and also the Honorable our Vice Rector for Academic Student Affairs and Cooperation, Bapak Dr. Victor Amrivo, MSI, dan mahasiswa-mahasiswi Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji yang berbahagia. Thank you very much for joining us today by offline and virtual from Zoom Meeting application. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, to begin the first station in this event, we would like to welcome to the podium Director of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji to deliver the welcoming remarks. Please welcome Professor Dr. Agung Damar Shakti, DEA. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And the Honorable Samsul Bahrom PSB, Senior Policy Analyst from Rio Island Government, uh, Honorable Terence, Dr. Terence Chong, the Director of the Office of International Relations, Republic Polytechnic Singapore, then our guest speaker, Dr. Stephen Fong, and Mr. Seh Kim Yu, and of course with the old delegate from Republic Polytechnic Singapore, the Vice Rector on Academic Affairs, Student and uh, Cooperation, and our moderator, Hengki Irawan, which is our head of the Research Center and Community Empowerment entity, and of course, our student from several faculty in UMRA, and we also invite another audience that coming from outside UMRA. Ladies and gentlemen, in this welcoming remarks, I think uh, it is very great honor for us that uh, the colleague from Republic Polytechnic Singapore come to UMRA and try to share their expertise related to the food revolution industry 4.0 in the food security and including also the sustainable aquaculture. So if you remember the Einstein quote related with the adaptation, you know, he said that uh, not the most stronger species will survive, nor the most intelligent species, but the, the species, the one who can adapt it to the change that will survive. So I think the <laughs> revolution industry 4.0 is the disruptive era. So uh, we need to adapt with this disruption or the change that comes uh, to the, our society. And in this field, in the food industry and also for the aquaculture sustainability, there is so many disruptive action or phenomena also. So we have to be adaptive with all the change. And today we have Dr. Stephen Fong and Mr. Seh Kim Yu that will share us, that will uh, shed some light for our better understanding about how to adapt with this possibility disruption. I think uh, today we, we will get some uh, public lecture and discuss the fruitful discussion among us. Uh, I hope that you can enjoy this this public lecture. Yeah, And without further ado, I think uh, I will uh, let the moderator to come to this podium and then lead the public lecture. Okay, with the, uh, I think uh, by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, you know, uh, uh, even I don't ask for the open this ceremony, but I think uh, it's very important to start, yeah, the, to start the public lecture by Bismillah, uh, the public lecture, Food Revolution Industry 4.0 in Food Security is obviously open. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Bapak Rektor of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji. He has given his official remarks and officially opened the public lecture for today. And ladies and gentlemen, let us warmly invite our keynote speaker, Bapak Samsul Bahrum, PhD. Please welcome.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Peace be upon you. A very good afternoon. The Honorable uh, Rector of Umrah University, Professor Adin, and all uh, colleagues and senior lecturers of universities, Dr. Stevens and Mr. Te, and all the delegations from Republic Polytechnic of Singapore. Allow me on behalf of the governors and as a senior analyst of development environment and, and development, just to have a short speech regarding about the importance of uh, food security and food safety regarding about Revolution 4.0 in terms of the capacity and capability of our provincial government in producing, consuming, and maybe exporting and, and so on about the food based on agriculture and aquaculture. First of all, I think this is very important to address and to put strong emphasis in terms of the importance of economic development within the framework of the sustainable development. As the UNDP in 2012 under the International Dutech Nation Conference on Development, it is said that sustainable development is how to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the next generation to meet their own needs. It means that the economic growth should be under the framework of environmental sustainability, what we call in some terminology, we call it growth efficiency. Economic growth create environmental efficiency. Do with less. Do more job, do more economic benefit with less impact on environment. This is a very key factors in environment. If we need the need of environment without making trading off of the young generation's needs in the future. What is the most part, well, what is the most important say is that, that we cannot create the new world without being created first the young generation. To keep the young generation in healthy and happy in terms of all aspects of environment of all aspects of life they should have a sustainable development in terms of any approach of development in the current government government's policy. Food security, food chains from upstream to downstream should be made under principle of healthy and safety food to be consumed, to be produced and to be consumed, even in market strategy. As we already know that we are islands to dissolve more than 2,400 islands, just only 4% are land. The scarcity of land become a very strategic factor of any agriculture because some area government much more emphasis on the development of economic by establishing establishment of industrialization. So the property sector, commercial sector, and residential sector or commercial industrial sectors has share large numbers of land allocation and sometimes regardless about the importance of food security for the benefits of the province of the people of the Rio Islands. So that's why that almost 70% consume product, especially in food stock and essential product imported from other part of Indonesia, even imported from other part of the world. What is very important here is not only to produce food in terms of quantity, assurance or guarantee of quantity, but the most important is the quality and the continuity of the product. A better product, not only better for local consumption, but a better product can be competitive, can give us a higher competitiveness in terms of our own product into international even Asian, even Singaporean uh, uh, market. So we already know that uh, geographical factors, proximity is very close from here to Singapore. I think it is uh, one of the most important, uh, important uh, side of the development. We can choose friends and enemies, but we cannot choose our next neighbors. Once Singaporeans geographically become our neighbors, there are only two options, cooperation and competition, but under cooperation not 
best only competition. We try to establish cooperation between the government of Riau Island and the Republic of Singapore. Many programs have been established for the CBN, confidence building measure has been made. And one of the most important here is the signing of memorandum of in the understanding of intent between the provincial government and the Republic of Singapore in terms of six special short course. Two short course will be run in Singapore and four other course will be run in Indonesia. I think so one of the most important institutions is Umbra become the key factors for the triple helix cooperation between academician, government and business. That's why at the same time the government, local government also try to invite some co companies or any potential companies in Singapore have a very good investment, especially in food supply and food chain from downstream to upstream for the security, not only for exporting, but also the most important is for domestic market obligation that what is most important here is real islands still need many food stock and majority of them imported from the power of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the delegation of Singapore has come here, especially from the Polytechnic, and will be a new area of the next cooperation bilaterally, not only democrat democratically, but academically. So we hope that some cooperation can be settled down between Umbra University and the Republic of Polytechnic of Singapore. My governor, the governors, I have reported to the governors that one of the good issues here, how to, to strengthen, how to strengthen the cooperation, not only in government level, but the most importantly is in social level, in academic level, to have a special student exchange, student program, and try to uh, make elaboration and collaboration between these uh, universities, Umbra University, and also uh, Republic of Polytechnic University. The other ones is regarding about the food revolution industry. As we know that we are now on the situation, the very important of industrial four point zero. Under the new society of five point zero, what we are facing now is the Internet of Things, big data, artificial intelligence, yeah, and blockchain digital economy, transformation. What is most important here, we also need the need of the existence of digital leadership, of revolution 4.0 leadership and management. The governor who has put any concern regarding on it, and our rector, we are very happy that our rector have a very strong basic discipline and knowledge in terms of marine economy, coastal management, marine science, and blah, blah, blah. So I think this is one of the most important things where the Umrah should be put up and on it on the features, current and the features. And the other one is the importance also of any new model of development. We are changing from current national model of development. You know that uh, as the Rosto has made a special stages of the development from tribal, traditional society, there's transnational society preconditioned to take off, driven to majority even high mass consumption. Now we are having the generation of high mass consumption. The high mass consumption, but it's follow also in the quality and the standard of life and standard of living. The first thing first is the standard of food. That is why every food produced should be have international standard. There will be no contaminated food product not only from the growing, harvesting, transportation, logistics, and the most important thing is the end-to-end inscription -end or end-to-end -end use at the end user is the people themselves. And what we are going to get now is the model, a new paradigm of development, try to put together agricultural sector and aquacastic and marine sector at the traditional sector become a leading new sector under the touch under the touch of technology especially under revolution 4.0 technology now we are not talking agriculture in terms of traditional production and product but we are talking that agriculture in terms of agro business market oriented strategies 
international standards model of development. And the most important thing here is sustainable development by the 17 SDS. Sustainable development goal is the strategic partnership. Now what we are doing now is try to elaborate the strategic partnership of 17 sustainable development approach to our current development into the campus, into the government policy, and the most important thing is into the society as a whole. The combination between the green, the green economy in the land and the blue economy in the water. I think this is all my keynote speech, and thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Honorable Bapak Syamsul Bahrum, PhD, as Senior Analyst of Kepulauan Riau Province. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we are going to begin our public lecture. And we would like to welcome our moderator, Bapak Henki Irawan, as the head for the Research Center and the Research Community. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon everybody. Selamat sore. Nah, hari ini kita akan uh, menyaksikan pemaparan dari dua narasumber, yaitu ada uh, Bapak Steven, Mr. Steven, and Bapak, should I call you Kim or T? Kim is okay, ya, yeah, ya, yeah. Bapak Kim, nah, lebih lebih friendly namanya Kim, ya. Yeah. Nah, jadi dua, dua narasumber kita ini akan nanti membawakan topik revolusi industri 4.0 dan uh, apa culture-nya. Nah, untuk itu, may I ask you, uh, both of you, come, have a seat in here. Please, Mr. Steven and Mr. Kim, berikan tepuk tangan, ya. So before we start, uh, we, you will present in English, right? And can you also give some speech in Malay maybe? Because I need also my students can understand or in 100% English is okay. <laughs> it should be 99% English. <laughs> But I will speak slower and in simple common term to Uh, and sure everyone understand. Oke. Okay. Ya, jadi ada adik sekalian. Jadi pemaparannya dalam akan dalam bahasa Inggris, tapi saya yakin kalian pendengar bahasa Inggris pasif. Nah, sehingga nanti di sesi setelah dua narasumber kita melakukan pemaparan, silakan bertanya, jangan malu-malu bertanya. Saya akan menerjemahkannya ke dalam bahasa Inggris dan uh, jawaban dari beliau-beliau ini juga akan saya terjemahkan nanti ke dalam bahasa Inggris untuk uh, kalian. Jadi ambillah ilmu sebanyak-banyaknya dari kegiatan ini. So for the first opportunity is for the Mr. Steven to present uh, the the presentation and after that to you Mr. I, Mr. I, Kim. I, I will go you first. first. Yes. Oh you will go first. Okay. Uh, go to the Mr. Steven file. Uh, Kim. Uh, Kim. Oh sorry. I, I, <laughs> I still from. forget both of you. Sorry. sorry. Jadi sekarang kita akan menyaksikan pemaparan dari uh, Mr. Steven. Uh, sorry, Kim. Ya, yeah. my mistake. Kim. Dengan judul Aquaculture Sustainability atau keberlanjutan dalam budidaya perairan aquaculture. Nah, sudah? So, uh, uh, I'm Kim, I'm, I'll be talking about IoT, Industry okay. 4.0. Then Park Steven will be talking about the aquaculture. Uh, oh, aquaculture. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, no problem with that. Okay, we will start. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mr. Kim. Yes, you can, can I test it now? Yeah, no problem. Is it a mask or? No problem. Oh, you can open. Okay, can. 
Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. I hope the camera can catch me. I will be walking around. I'll be having my lecture in a very fun and relaxed way, okay? Guys, I know it's been a long day, so let's keep it fun. You're all very serious, huh? Wait, where's my name? I haven't introduced myself. Good afternoon, everyone. Peace be upon you. Um, my name is my full name is De Kim Yu. You can call me Kim. You can call me Darling. Sayang, no problem, right? <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, yeah, right, right. right. I'm from Singapore. Um, I've been lecturing in Republic Polytechnic for the past twelve years. You are my typical students that I have in my school, but you look more proper and more serious, uh. yeah. All right, today. I'm going to talk about Industry 4.0. Before I go on, who has never heard about Industry 4.0? Bulum, tengok apa Industry 4.0? Never. Nice. So semua orang tahu apa Industry 4.0 lah. Ah, I will go through a small history on Industry 4.0 as well. But my lecture, I'm a very lazy lecturer lah. I will have a lot of videos to let you see and understand. So uh, next slide please, okay. Watch this video, a very interesting video on are we ready for Industry 4.0? Are we ready for automation? Are we ready for robots? We have heard so many things about America or Europe that, oh, robot is so good. Are we ready for Industry 4.0? The video, next slide. Great video, yeah, thank you. Play jazz. Playing jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Voice automation. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, Tan Lekya at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Open door. Door open. Son, so ska vi sätta en till? Fire. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open. Open door. Repeat that. Open door? I didn't understand that. Hey, open door! Play on the floor. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. Open the door! Open the door! Open the door! Open the door! Error. Hey, video. Put a rock. Open door. Open door. All right, a short video on Industry 4.0 on automation, on robots, on voice recognition. Sometimes a simple key, cukup lah, huh? tapi uh, open door, open uh, pintu, very hard. A key is more important. But of course, Industry 4.0 automation, they do have their purpose, which can make everyone a uh, more enjoyable day and make your work more efficient. Next slide, thank you. So, Industry 4.0, or some call it IoT, Internet of Things. What is this in this name? I'm going to share with you in Singapore terms. In Singapore terms, the upper management, the ministers, they'll call it digitalization. Wow. Next slide. In short floor, in operations, we call it robots because I need robots. No, I need Industry 4.0 to help me. And in Singapore, Singapore leadership, what is Industry 4.0? Upper robot, upper Industry 4.0, upper IoT. They say automation, technology. And in Singapore Union, or you call it the Singapore General Workers, what is Industry 4.0 to them? Technology. So if you can see, there is a similarity. Other subtle dual words are similar, similar, sama, sama. Technology. And technology is here. You like it or not? You love it or not? Are you scared or not? You have to face it. Technology is here. So, I, a, a very simple, very um, quick overview of Industry 4.0. The very beginning, Industry 1.0. That is where we use, long time ago, about three, four hundred years ago, they used water, IA, uh, the river IA, uh, Jana IA to move the windmill, the, the, the turbine, to come up with simple mechanism. Industry 2.0, you can see it. 
that's where we have electricity, electric. Industry 2.0 is where we have electric. Yeah, you'd be surprised, electric is far, far, far. That was like 150, 100 to 150 years ago, right? And then 50 years later, we have robots. Robots, uh, and that's under industry 3.0, you know, robots. Robots were already here. They were here, example, your car. A lot of Toyota, they're made in Indonesia. They have been using robots, and it's 3.0. And the, and the duration gets shorter and shorter. It was 200 years, one revolution, 100 years. And then 50 years, another revolution. Now, 20 years later or 30 years later, is Industry 4.0, where we have IoT, robots. Not just robots, we call it cobots, collaborative robots. Robots back then were oh, dangerous. Huh? If you work with you, they, they can hit you and get injured. But now, hari ini, eh, robots boleh kerja orang-orang surrounding. I can work with the robots. Robot will be here. Oh, sini ada orang. Okay, saya jangan. Okay, I will go next to you. Robots or cobots, collaborative robots, always able to protect people, work together. Okay, and we have softbot, which I'm going to show you later. Okay. Ah, next slide. Thank you. So, robots are, uh, uh, are here to help us. But the next video I'm going to show you, I felt takut. I see the robot in future, I takut. Let's see, but to me, personal, takut. But to everyone, wow, oh, bagus ah, boleh, you know, go to, go to Ukraine ah, and fight war. I will show you what is a takut robot to me. Thank you. Really sexy. Back then, when I was your age, that was like 25, 30 years ago. I was doing a robot, and we are just trying to make the robot go down the staircase. Because going down the staircase is very difficult because the robot needs to know how far should I stop landing my, my legs. Now the robot works like human. Why I think it's scary? Just my personal view. I can deploy the robot to go to the wall. Yeah. And I don't need to sacrifice. My friends, my cousin, my brothers, I just sacrificed a robot. Yeah. So, it's like, today, I have a much, 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 much smaller robot to introduce to you. And I'm sure you can have this robot within two days. And you learn how to program this robot within one day. Like what Dr. Samsung has mentioned food safety, food documentation, food export import. Today, you talk about food revolution. Industry 4.0. We have seen banyak video lah, wow, robots in the farm, robots in the in the fishery, robots in, in in the packaging. Today, I'm going to show you the smallest, most kitschy robot that you can ever have installed in your laptop. We call it the robotic process automation. It is so small, it's hidden in your computer, and can do things for you. So uh, I'm going to skip this very quickly. Even in banks, in many import-export companies, they have been using RPA, Robotic Process Automation. The, most, the smallest robot they can even find in your laptop. They will, this robot, what can they do? Next slide, thank you. What is RPA? Okay. This robot is able to mimic, to learn as a user. For example, hurry, hurry, you go to office, okay, you open, open your email, ah, customer, check out me, okay, I copy, paste, send to manager. 
Simple. Use a matter. I look, I see, okay, I copy. Today, I will install a robot in your computer. The robot will do summer, summer things. Tengok email. Oh, buka email. Okay, tengok other email. Copy, paste, send manager. And wow, you can have your coffee. Robots doing things. Right. This is the smallest robot that ever happened in this world now, RPA. So these are the few processes that you can actually consider using RPA, which I will not go through. Most important, whatever you do in your laptop computer, every day same, copy, paste, send email, do report, thing out, okay, plus minus, everything can be done by a robot. The robot will type for you and you just do other things. I will show some example. Okay before, uh, okay, before my example, this robot has very minimum um, storage requirement in your computer. Okay? Right, if look, if from this requirement, is a typical Intel i3. i3 that was like eight years ago technology. Right? And you can have this installed in your laptop. So let's see what does this robot do. Uh? You can turn off the music, actually. There's no music. Okay. Yeah. I'll show you, uh, yeah, next slide, thank you. Okay, oh no, no, yeah, yeah this, is a this is a video. Before we play this video, we have this food safety administrator in the office. Every day, he will look at the website, or oh, copy the government announcement, and copy into the email, copy in the Excel. Click, click, type the keyboard. This person now can be in the cafe, drink coffee. Robot in the laptop you do for him. Play. So whatever you see now is done by robot. Dada Olang click mouse, ah. Dada Olang click keyboard. Summa dia action, ah. Robot in the computer. Wah, the user Olang. Okay, relax. No, have a coffee. Wah, the robot is going to the website copy the information <coughs> and copy into Excel. So ro robot boleh buka Internet Explorer, boleh buka Chrome, Google, boleh buka Excel and do exactly what you do every day. Right. This is what we call the real automation. Especially important for food security. A lot of documentation, a lot of eyeball, a lot of see, you know, copy and paste, submit documents to authority. Now all this will be replaced. All this <coughs> process will be done by the robot. Okay. So, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So, before using RPA, before using this robot, this process by a person, uh, every morning about seventy-five minutes. Let's look at what happened if I use robot proper jam. Uh, two below lima limits minutes. It was 75 minutes. Orang, office, copy. And this person will have a, a headache, you know, will be sad, will make error. But robot, another error. And with robot, 25 minutes, 300% cepat. And another orang. This is how scary it is. I'm not saying that the robot will replace your job. The robot is here to replace the gerja, like, like Every day, summer, summer, gerja. Don't do it. You design robot, perform this uh, job. Let's see another example. Next, next, thank you. So again, we are always uh, taking data from internet or taking data from our Excel and go to internet and paste or getting information from internet, copy the information and paste in Excel. Or even Word. So just now we talked about robot, other body, buka Google, body buka Excel. Robot also help you buka Microsoft Word and do a report for you. This is scary because <clears throat> honestly, this job will be replaced in future. We are not going to replace you, don't worry. But we want you to train, train you to design robot so that your job will be more efficient. Right. Next slide, thank you. 
So, before we use robot, we need about one and a half hour a day. Ada orang satu setengah jam ah hari hari do reporting. Now orang tak apa, don't need anymore. Orang go do other job and robot do this computer job for setengah jam, half an hour. And this robot tak ada error. Ini robot tak ada Facebook. Ini robot tak ada Instagram. Every day just do 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 do. For student ah uh, student ah uh, you do report. Okay lah report then. Hey, Instagram all those thing ah. Uh. And then, eh, error. Ah, yeah, sorry, uh, sir, uh, Instagram, uh, error. Robot tak ada Instagram. Robot tak ada girlfriend. Tak ada emo. Uh. Robot hari-hari, click, do. Setengah jam. Yeah, this is how useful robot is. Okay, next slide, thank you. Now, robot. Hari-hari, copy, paste, Excel. Hari-hari, copy, Word. And then go to internet. Hey, robot, help me write email. Uh. So you, oh yeah, lazy, yeah. Uh. Today you'd be surprised the robot can write email for you on behalf of you. But email your your order come, your your colleagues, your friends email you, they reply. Robot replies. Let's see how the robot reply. Whatever you see here, tada orang touch, ah, tada orang click mouse, tada orang type keyboard. Semua robot is doing this. This robot is inside your laptop. RPA. You see what the robot is doing now. The robot click left, uh, right, 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 copy, copy, copy. Let's see. It's still copying things. And after the robot get all the information, the robot go to the Microsoft Word, do a report for you. Summa type by robot. Robot typing. And you are not there. Now you are doing other work. So let's see what happened after the robot finished typing this word document. You still typing? Right? All typed by robot, huh? robot typing. Typing all the information. The last part will be amazing. Robot will go to your email. The entire day, huh? summa hari, huh? relax. Robot do report Excel, do it in Microsoft Word. Robot send email for you. That is how scary robot is. Robot really can fully offload all your work and you can do all other important stuff. Okay? I'm not going to scare you, but in many parts of Europe and US, a lot of jobs belong, gone. Because robot is here. It will help you do your work. Next slide. So, I need three days a month to do this reporting and email. Now, robot, four hours. I can't even calculate how much efficiency gain. It's like a few 10,000 efficiency gain. Only robot, accurate. <laughs> Thank you. So, yep, again, a simple sample of how robots can do documentation, especially important for food safety and food security. All right. In food safety, in food security, in agriculture, in fishing or um, farming report to export import documentation, robot is can be here to help you do all the accuracy, all the work. Yeah. Okay, I will stop here for a while. My students who is your age design this robot in half a day. Okay? This robot special. This robot, just now we, the robot able to do email, Excel, internet, Word. Now my robot can help you do WhatsApp. You use WhatsApp, right? WhatsApp, Indonesian WhatsApp. Robot can help you do WhatsApp reply. So this is a real case. Uh, I'm not sure about you guys. You guys have attachment, like internship. Internship, go to company and work. So that this seafood distributor in Singapore, this seafood company, yeah, hari hari other order lah. Order masuk email, order masuk SMS, order masuk WhatsApp. Then other ni, uh, other uh, office lady, yeah, okay, uh, other order email, okay, copy process, okay, operation, uh, buka order, okay. Oh, order coming WhatsApp, okay, order ni two bluefin tuna satu salmon, okay. 
operation, a prepare, order, send. These are all no value add. This lady only see, take an order, okay, process. My student, your age, designed a robot to take in all the orders from WhatsApp. Let's see. So, this entire process, ah, tada orang click, ah, tada orang click mouse, tada orang tap keyboard. Robot buka Excel. Okay. So, robot standby Excel operation template. Ah, uh, mau masuk order, ah. Okay. Now, robot buka WhatsApp. Ah, tengok ada order tak? Ah, customer. Okay. So WhatsApp online lah, lagi senang lah. Okay, all robot type WhatsApp online. Sini ya, department tak ada orang ah, semua robot. Robot pergi, eh WhatsApp ada order. Robot tengok apa order hari ini. Hari ini order ada salmon, ada bluefin tuna, ada mackerel, samba, samba. So robot tengok, okay, hari ini banyak order, okay. Copy and paste. Order. Semua order ke operation. Eh, operation. Uh, cepat lah. Potong lah. Salmon, tuna. Okay. And send. And the lagi best ah. Robot reply. What's that? Ad? What's that message? Terima kasih banyak customer. Everything done by robot. Yeah. This is scary, you know. The real, don't need a, really a, a lady or a guy to be you no know, customer service. No need. I use a robot. Customer service. What's that reply? Today, I'm not here that to tell you that you lose your job. I'm here to tell you that you must get ready. Think far on how you can have a new career, a new industry 4.0 uh, perspective of what kind of job you should do. Because a lot of job can be automated. Uh, next slide, thank you. Next slide. Okay, guys. I'm excited to, uh, to share with you guys more on RPA, Robotic Process Automation. And there are free software, free RPA. I'm not here to sell RPA. There are free software which I could share with you all on how you can install the robot in your laptop and then can do a lot of report for you. So this is my email. Feel free to email me and I, I will respond to you as soon as possible. Uh, any questions so far? Guys, any questions? Very shy everyone. Huh? Okay, with that, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Uh, jadi, kalau kita lihat pemaparan yang tadi, segala sesuatu akan otomatisasi, mesin bisa belajar, mesin semakin cerdas, dan mungkin salah satu impian kalian adalah mesin yang bisa jawab soal UAS UTS kalian, kali ya. Terus bisa, bikin, bisa bikinin tesis atau skripsinya. Nah, tapi tadi ada lagi orang yang lebih canggih daripada itu sehingga nggak bisa diakalin. Makanya kalau sama saya ujiannya pakai video karena nggak mungkin dibikinin sama mesin. Setidaknya sampai sekarang belum ada mesin yang bisa bikinin. Nah, simpan pertanyaannya karena nanti akan nyamuk dengan materi uh, narasumber kita yang kedua, ya. So, Mr. Steven, you welcome to present. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I need to apologize, my Malay is terrible, so I won't even try, right? Uh, okay, so uh, my talk today is on uh, aquaculture 4.0. And uh, so this is the university, uh, Maritime University, right? So, so I am confident that I am talking to experts, yeah? Or, you can understand the terms that I use, yeah? So, now I, the talk will be very short. It really is uh, a showcase of uh, our problem, all right? Singapore's problem and how we approach the problem and try to help ourselves. That is the, yeah. So, 
aquaculture 4.0. Now, Singapore is very small, really, really small, but we still need to feed ourselves. And over the last 50 years, a lot has changed in Singapore. We have lost almost all our farmland. Now we have only 1% farmland left. So out of this 1%, we produce 10% of the food that we consume, and we import 90% of the food that we need to survive. And any intelligent person will come to the conclusion that this is not a nice situation, all right? And therefore, we embark on a, a bold vision, all right, to try and improve our food production from the current 10% to 30% by the year 2030. So now it's already 2022. We have eight more years to go, all right, to hit this big in increase from 10% to 30%. Now that's not easy. That really is not easy. So all of you, you know, are probably familiar with farming fish, catching fish, fisheries. You know, you suddenly want to increase this uh, amount. It's not going to be easy. Now, human beings, intelligent, ingenious, and our natural instinct is to say, well, you know, technology has worked for us, you know, over the last 200 years since the Industrial Revolution, and it will again come and save us, right? So, again, you know, the belief is that if we apply technology, all right, we stand a better chance of achieving this target, yeah? So, as uh, <laughs> my friend here, you know, have shown you, you know, it, technology is there. Now, you can have simple technology, you can have very advanced technology. Now, aquaculture is a little bit different. Aquaculture is not computer science, all right? The major difference between aquaculture and computer science is that aquaculture is biologically limited. What do I mean by that? I cannot make my wife give birth to my son in less than nine months. I can't. That is biological limitation. That's how long it takes. And for different species of fish, that's how long it takes. We can maybe make the fish grow a little bit faster, right? or use a little bit less feed, but we cannot change a lot, fundamentally, the nature of fish. So this is what I mean by biological limited. Now, if there are areas that we cannot do much about, so we need to look for areas that we can do something about, those that are not limited by nature. All right, so that's where the technology can be and should be applied to, all right? Now, if we talk to farmers, uh, if we talk to uh, fishermen, they have a lot of problems. And we have a motto, a mantra that we always tell ourselves, don't offer a million dollar solution to a 20 cent problem. That is, that is not going to fly, right? It's very simple, okay? So again, application or solution must match the size of the problem. Sometimes the problem is small, right? And maybe that is not too crucial. We can leave it. But some other problem is big. And that is the one that we should focus on, all right? So let me very quickly run through uh, the development of aquaculture in Singapore and how we decide to, uh, to solve this problem, right? So, uh, here I think, you know, the, <coughs> the term fisheries is applied to both farming and uh, uh, catching of fish, right? But technically, the Food and Agriculture uh, Association, a a FAO, I make a distinction. So, fisheries is the ship going out to harvest the wild fish. Whereas aquaculture is actually farming, yeah? So when I talk 
about aquaculture, it really is about farming. It is not about fisheries. And for a simple reason, Singapore has no fishery. The, the industry doesn't exist. Okay, so the only uh, thing that we can do is to farm the fish that we will eat. And, but, and of course, we will import uh, wild caught fish from Indonesia, you know. So Indonesia supply us up to 50% of the wild caught fish that we consume, right? So thank you very much. <laughs> and so, so this is aquaculture. Next slide, please. All right. And uh, why is aquaculture important? Because the fish stock is dwindling, right? You, you are getting less and less wild caught fish, all right? And I know that because when we talk to uh, boat owners, when they go out and then when they come back, uh, they report that the fish that they catch less, right, and they are smaller, all right. So this is what we call overfishing, right. So because of overfishing, the return is less, right. There will come a time where we are so completely overfished that the ocean uh, can't regenerate, and that, that's it, finish, all right. So the alternative is to farm the fish that we eat. Now there is a difference, right. If I take a boat, go out and uh, catch fish, I can catch whatever I is there. But farming is different. You can only farm the species that you can breed. So again, there is a second limitation. If you have not figured out how to breed the species, you can't farm it, right? So what it means is that the species that we can farm are a lot less than what we can catch, all right? And we will just have to get used to it you know with consuming a smaller variety of uh, species all right sometimes farmers don't like to farm they say I, I want to be a fisherman i want to go out and fish and when we tell them fishing the return will be bad because of overfishing you should start farming they say no i don't want to <clears throat> and when we look at this, all right, the, the, the problem is actually very straightforward. Okay? Unlike chicken or vegetable or um, a beef, all right, the, the competition for a fish farmer doesn't come from another farmer. It doesn't. For a chicken farmer, the competition is another chicken farmer. But for a fish farmer, the competitor is actually the fishermen. They are the ones who come back with boat loads of fish. They are the ones who decide the market price. The farmer has no choice but to match the market price. You follow the economics? All right? So for a fisherman, he doesn't compete with fellow, uh, no, sorry, for a fish farmer, he doesn't compete with fellow farmers. His real competitor is the boat that goes out and do the fishery, all right? So aquaculture has very unique challenges that a chicken farm owner doesn't face, okay? So next slide, please. So in Singapore, the three problems that we face is how to increase production without requiring more space. We are extremely small, all right? how to increase productivity without harming the environment, all right, and how to increase yield while managing fish stock health. So these are the, our three main problems, okay? So I will do a very quick run through of what aquaculture was, okay, and where we want to see it to be, okay? So next slide, please. So I think all of you probably are familiar with what I'm saying here, all right? Aquaculture can be uh, classified, can be systemized into open, close, intensive, extensive, all right? So just to very quickly uh, explain all these terms and get all of us on the same page, all right? Next slide, please. <clears throat> so in the early days, you know, when you know, we have backyard farms, farms, ponds that is behind the house, all right, with some ducks and some uh, carp in the pond, all right, in the kampong, okay. <coughs> we, 
we don't purposely feed the fish. Sometimes the food that we eat, uh, leftover, we just throw in the water, all right? And that, that will do. Now, that kind of farming, okay, is extensive. Sometimes you don't even bother because the water will turn green and the carp will uh, feed on the algae that's already in the water, yeah? So these are what we call extensive. From extensive, we move to semi-intensive to intensive. The difference is the kind of feed that we give them. Next slide, please. So, if we apply commercial feed, all right, commercial means those pellets that you can uh, buy, all right, that you throw uh, into the, the tank or, the, or your gelong, all right? So, if we apply commercial feed, commercial feed, that will be the first step towards intensification. Okay, next slide please. So, and then <clears throat> we can classify uh, farming by the structure. Okay, so we can have close and open. Open is very simple, the sea cages, yeah, your kelong, uh, that one is open. Close will be like your pond culture. Now, Pond culture is the simplest, next slide, because, uh, and it's the earliest, 5,000 years ago, you know, natural pond, uh, they already started farming fish there, okay? So, the first aquaculture uh, are freshwater fish, because it is pond, okay? And in China, they were farming uh, uh, carp, I think in, in Egypt, uh, they, were, they are farming tilapia. All right, tilapia is a noun fish, African fish. So, globally, pond aquaculture is very productive, right? You look at these numbers, I, I won't go through them, but you look at these numbers. So, pond aquaculture is actually very productive, okay? Now, if you think about pond aquaculture, you would think that, oh, this one is rather primitive, all right? But it is not because uh, it can be very intensive. Although it is a simple closed pond uh, farming system, we can apply a lot of technology and make the productivity very high. Yeah. So the next uh, the next uh, step away from pond is to use tanks, right? And uh, raceways. Okay. So these are concrete structures, man-made. All right. Uh, purposely for farming fish, okay? And then uh, further on from this, uh, next slide please. Okay, we'll be recirculating system. So recirculating aquaculture system is like your home fish tank. If you keep fish at home, there's a tank, all right? There's a, maybe an arowana or a goldfish swimming in there. Now, the water remains in the tank. You have a pump that pumps the water up to a future, all right? And then after the water is clean, it comes back into the tank. This is a very simple recirculating system. Now, if you imagine this, your home aquaria, and you extend it, you know, expand the scale, all right? We will have a commercial scale recirculating aquaculture system. Why we do that, all right? Because in Singapore, water is very expensive. One cubic meter is $1.60, I think. <laughs> that really is very, very expensive, okay? So we have no choice. We have no choice, right? So we have to face uh, the reality that we cannot uh, farm fish like you can, okay? So we, we have to do this, all right? So now we have recirc recirculating aquaculture system, right? 400 tons of water, 800 tons of water, or, and a new system up 4,000 tons of water, all right? And we never throw the water away, never. We just keep cleaning it and keep reusing it. Now, if you think about cleaning the water, it is almost like cleaning the air in the room, right, that we are now. If I seal up all the vents and windows and everything, and we only have the air in this room, and this air in this room is going to keep me alive for the next nine months. That is the challenge of a recirculating, recirculating aquaculture system, right? There's no new input. So the technology required for this is going to be extremely high, all right? But like I said, we don't have a choice. If I look at the price of the technology 
and I look at the price of the water that I need to farm, and if I plan out my farming over the next few years, the technology will come out to be cheaper than the water that I have to pay. They make sense, right? Right? If the water is cheaper than the technology that I have to pay, why bother? But that's not the case. Right? So for me, it makes sense right, to apply this technology. Okay, next slide, please. So this is uh, some uh, photos, example of uh, contained system uh, in tanks on land. The next uh, photo. Next slide, yes. Okay, so these are floating uh, contained system. Okay, so you are familiar with the Kelong that we have. Okay, net cage and open. Now, we can't do that. We have to do this. Because in our effort to farm more fish, we also need to make sure that the environment is not uh, degraded. All right? Farming can be quite dirty all right? because you throw a lot of feed uh, into the water. I, I, I give you a very simple <laughs> yeah, mental calculation. All right? In farming, we have this uh, term called feed conversion ratio. All right, how many kilograms of feed produce how many kilograms of fish? Yeah, so feed conversion ratio, FCR. Now, typically, if you take Paramandi, uh, the feed conversion ratio is about two. All right, okay. So I give the fish two kilos of feed, I get back one kilo of fish. Where the one kilo go to? Uh? The one kilo become what? Waste. Uh. All right, fickle. The, the fish actually pass it out. All right, so that creates a lot of pollution. Okay, for every two kilogram of feed I throw in the water, at the end I harvest one kilogram of fish. That missing one kilo becomes waste in the water. Okay, and and that is a problem that is unacceptable for extremely small country. For us, we simply cannot accept that. All right. So to solve that problem, we have to farm fish in tanks that's mounted on special barges that's floating on the sea, so that the water that we discharge, all right, is cleaner than the water that we draw. So I have fish swimming in a tank. I draw water from the sea, all right. I clean it up, I farm the fish, and then I throw it back out. The water that I discharge is actually cleaner than the water that I pump up. So, by farming fish, I actually clean up my water. But it is going to be expensive. It is. I'm not going to lie, right? But I have to do that because I don't have an alternative. All right? Next slide, please. Okay, so that, so, so we have, uh, you know, containment system. Now, the next issue with farming fish has got to do with water management. So I just briefly mentioned that it is quite polluting. And the, the fish, if, if we stay in this room and I close all the window, right, all of us will get COVID and oxygen level will drop, CO2 level will go up, right? Okay, so the quality of air here is going to degrade quite badly. But how do I know? How do I know? How do we know that the quality of the air is becoming bad? We feel uncomfortable. First, we feel uncomfortable. Now, if I have special probes, I can actually measure the CO2 level. I can also measure the oxygen level. I can, right? Okay. Simple thermometer will allow me to measure the temperature of the room. Yeah. So after a while, if there's no free airflow, temperature will go up, humidity will go up, uh, oxygen will go down, CO2 will go up. All this we can measure, all right? So these are uh, parameters that are important for farming fish too, okay? So uh, next slide, please. So for farming fish, you have dissolved oxygen, your ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, this you know, this is chemistry, yeah? Temperature pH, and you have uh, 
the biotic factors in the water, so disease, pathogens, all right, viruses, okay. So all this we need to measure because when we start farming fish at a very high stocking density, uh, that they will feel stress, and when they feel stress, maybe they don't grow as fast, which is not good. So here we have a we have a dilemma, all right. In order for a businessman to uh, be successful in farming fish, he needs to farm it at a very high stocking density. But when he farms it at a high stocking density, the fish is stressed. And when the fish is stressed, uh, it doesn't grow as fast, and maybe it will die. All right. So this is a, a, a dilemma here, and and a good uh, fish farmer will need to compromise all right and that's where science is okay so because if you have uh, learned your mathematics well uh, you, we can actually do a linear analysis we can actually solve a few differential equations and come to a sweet spot what is the best stocking density for this species we can because we can model it that's where mathematics comes in that's where my good friend engineer all right <laughs> he can help me okay modeling all right, so these are quite uh, advanced technology that we actually already have today. We don't need to wait until tomorrow. Okay, next slide, please. Right, so I was saying that if we have probes, we can, oh, a lot of the probes have gone missing. Okay, next slide, please. Never mind. Yeah, so we, we have quite a lot of probes. Click, click, click. That, uh, yeah, okay, all will come out. Okay, so just now you, you very quickly saw oh, yeah, all, all, all these probes. Now, today our farmers will have a collection of all these probes and every day, twice a day, all right, they will go and measure. Okay, and uh, as long as the water parameter falls within uh, the acceptable range, it's safe, everything is safe, right? Now, so, but what it also means is that every day somebody needs to be there. Okay, so if you go away for the weekend, all right, uh, Saturday, Sunday, you're not there, come back on a Monday, suddenly you get a shock because the, the water is completely different. Yeah, so how, how, how do you farm and still have a life? How do you farm and still be able to enjoy your time with your family? Your weekend, you can watch movie, you know, Top Gun, I don't know whether it's showing here or not, Maverick showing here already, yeah, go watch a movie. So how do you be able to farm and still have a life? That's where automation comes in, all right? So I, again, you know, whatever you can automate, you automate because that gives you uh, time, all right? To do something else, okay? Instead of just being around because you have to measure the water, all right? That, that is not a good way to spend a farmer's time. The farmer should be thinking about business, not doing this kind of job. All right, maybe he can hire a farm worker, but if he can save the money from the one farm worker, that's extra profit, right? Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, okay, next slide, please. So, I very quickly mentioned about uh, crowding, stress, which cause fish to get sick. I also very quickly mentioned about disease outbreak. Now, diseases are typically handled by the use of vaccine. If uh, vaccines are available, it's just like COVID, right? We just jab and that's it, right? So fish can be vaccinated. Uh, and some farmers, all right, they also farm fish with antibiotics. Now, there is a problem with antibiotics because uh, in many countries, there are they are illegal, right? Using and, and it's actually bad for human, right? So if, if I know a farm uses antibiotics, I would never buy from, from that farm, all right? Because it's bad for me, all right? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, skip, skip. I think skip. Okay, so I've skipped quite a few slides because I think I have covered that, all right? And I think we are all quite late in the day. So that's how we got to today. All right, so on the slide, you see 
uh, aquaculture 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Right now we are at aquaculture 3.0. Okay, we have used recirculating uh, aquaculture system. We have been applying vaccines. All right, uh, to manage uh, health and diseases. All right, in the open sea we have used. Uh, advanced containment system, either the Norwegian sea cage or the floating containment system. Now, what is aquaculture 4? Aquaculture 4 is aquaculture 3.0 plus all the monitoring system that is automated, all right? And diagnosis that is driven by artificial intelligence. How does a farmer know that the fish is sick? A farmer is not a vet. Very often, a vet is not a farmer because a vet wants to be a vet. How does a farmer know the fish is not well? Years and years of experience. That's how. He's been farming. He's been watching his dad farm. He learns from there. Okay? So if the fish is unwell, it will flash and all that. He knows. But we can actually confirm this in a lab. We take some fin clip, we take some skin scrap, all right, maybe some gill samples, put under a microscope, we check it, we can confirm it, we, we can run PCR, all right. Now, all these tests that we can do, at some point, we can teach the computer. This is machine learning, all right. We can teach the computer. And once the computer learns, it will automatically uh, recognize it, right. So. What it does is that we will have a video camera, all right, that will just keep looking at the fish. And the back end, you have a computer system that keeps analyzing the images. And as soon as it picks up the telltale sign, all right, of flashing or lethargy or floating or gapping for air on the surface, all right, immediately our alarm bells, it sends a warning to a handphone. You may be watching a movie somewhere and then suddenly bzz, and you look oh no good okay it's time for me to go back to the farm this is what we hope to get to this is aquaculture 4 why am i doing it because i have to i'm in singapore right so we have all kinds of constraints we are so small we are so dependent on import and yet we need to make sure that we have food it is our survival, security. As much as we thank our neighbors, all right, we also need to do things to help ourselves, right? So that's why we are embarking on this journey. Aquaculture 4.0 is important for us, and I'm happy to be able to share our vision, all right, with all of you here today. And uh, there are a lot that we can learn from Indonesia. Uh, like I said, right in the beginning, there are certain things that we can't do anything about the biology side. But there are certain things that we can do something about and that's what we want to try. Alright, okay, so thank you for your attention. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steven. Nah, jadi yang dipaparkan sama Mr. Steven tadi adalah bagaimana kegiatan budidaya yang Sebelum era revolusi 4.0 itu adalah pada fase 3.0, kita titik nol. Dan dengan perkembangan teknologi di revolusi industri 4.0, kegiatan perikanan dan budaya pun memasuki era 4.0-nya juga. Sehingga hal-hal yang tidak secara yang secara alami tidak bisa kita ubah, misalnya tadi ya mempercepat ikan tumbuh dan sebagainya, itu memang sulit. Tetapi ada hal-hal yang bisa kita ubah dengan teknologi biar bisa efektif dan efisien menggunakan alat. Nah, sini nanti masuknya ada yang namanya IoT dan sebagainya sehingga ngasih makan ngasih pakan lebih efisien, panen bisa lebih teratur ya, penyakit bisa dideteksi dari awal. Nah, kedua materi ini sangat berkaitan dan sekarang sesi ketiga adalah sesi tanya jawab. Jadi saya akan menampung tiga pertanyaan. Ya, silakan kalau yang PD bertanya dalam bahasa Inggris saya sangat menghargainya. Kalau enggak dalam bahasa Indonesia pun enggak apa-apa. Saya silakan. So they will uh, ask some question for both of you, my dear. Ada? You are not a student. Wait. <laughs> not. <laughs> you are the professor. <laughs> Oke, 
Oke. Okay. Student maybe? Ada? Mahasiswanya? Just to provoke the student. Please. You just to provoke the student? Oke, okay, that's good. Ya, silakan berdiri, sebutkan nama, name mungkin, asal prodi dan pertanyaannya. Kepada siapa boleh sebutkan ya ini? Mr. Kim, ini Mr. Steven. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Natasha Fitriana uh, dari Prodi Budidaya Perairan Angkatan 2020. Uh, izin bertanya kepada Mr. Teh Kim Yu. Uh, tadi kan uh, Mr. Teh Kim Yu bertanya, uh, menjelaskan tentang kelebihan-kelebihan robot. Berarti besar kemungkinan robot akan menggantikan posisi manusia dalam dunia bekerja. Nah, pertanyaan yang pertama, apakah kita sebagai manusia yang akan tetap mengendalikan robot tersebut untuk bekerja atau kita sebagai manusia kehilangan pekerjaan tersebut? Pertanyaan kedua, jika kita sebagai manusia kehilangan pekerjaan tersebut, apakah ada solusinya? Sekian, terima kasih. Terima kasih pertanyaannya. Mungkin pertanyaan kedua tuh bisa aja jadi aja robot gitu ya. Oke. Okay. So, Mr. Kim, uh, she asked you about uh, Natasha asked you about uh, uh, if uh, in the future the the robot will replace a uh, human job. So, still human can control the robot. And the second question is what happen if uh, the robot replace uh, our job? Okay. There's always this exclusive job Oh, Natasha, right? Thank you Natasha. Right. There's always this um very high possibility that robot will replace our job. But robot can re never replace our executive decision, our emotion, our friendship with counterparts. Robot can only decide when we tell them to do on the algorithms. So, um, but it leads to a next exclusive niche kind of career. We call it the the people who program the robot. So we are here to have this person understand the process. Don't do. We build a robot to do the process. This is the next kind of job which in fact can command higher salary. Yeah. Yeah, jadi uh, jawabannya adalah robot akan menggantikan pekerjaan kita tapi tidak akan bisa mengganti keputusan. Nah kita yang harus membuat keputusan oleh karena itu Manusia uh, yang profesinya tadi sebagai kalau saya bisa bilang sebenarnya tukang itu harus menjadi orang yang memprogramnya. Nah apapun bidang kalian nanti tentunya yang disentuh oleh robot sekarang tukang besok jadi programmernya. Nah kira-kira seperti itu jawabannya. Yang lain lagi? Jangan malu-malu. Ingat moto umrah belajar minta nanti aja jemu. Oke. 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 Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Stephen Fong, and also Mr. Teh Kim Yu. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Cecilia, first, to continue the, the question from my, my, my students, I think from the story that you are uh, telling us, the robot is going to tell us what to do. <laughs> uh, it's a good point, yeah. okay. In the first place, because the sensors, everything, the handphone will be Uh, well, will tell us the things that will, should be done. That's good news. Another employment for the human being. <laughs> Actually, you are right. Robot, Robot able to collect us. data and tell a story. And of course, you, can, you are the final gatekeeper. The robot tells you a story, but yeah. can still decide what do I do with the story? Do I execute yes. or do I just think of other things? Yeah. It is nice of being employed by the robot actually, isn't it? <laughs> There's no emotional things between us. <laughs> That's a good one. Quite a, the collaboration of robot and human. The robot tells the human the story, that the data they have collected, and then the human will see what he or she will decide to do. And the other one is for Dr. Fong. Do you consider the animal or the fish welfare in your system, in your phone? Thank you. 
Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, the welfare of the fish is <laughs> extremely important. Yes, we, we, I, at least I do consider it and many of our, our industry uh, partners also consider the welfare of the fish. So, the issue with welfare is this. Um, the farmers have no incentive to ill-treat the animal that they are farming. Really, it, it don't make sense. Because when you ill-treat the farmer that you are farming, they don't grow well and they will die. Now, of course, the end result is that they sacrifice so that we may eat, all right? But in, in the process, we don't want them to prematurely die. So, from the philosophical point of view, there really is no incentive. Yeah, so I, I, I hope I answer your question. There, there, there is no ill will from the point of view of the farmer to intentionally treat the animal badly. But the, the animals can suffer, right? And which is where uh, analysis, all right, uh, informed decision making comes in. At which point, right? So if, if I uh, increase the stocking density at which point it would become uh, bad for the animal that I'm farming. Okay, now of course this set point can be set arbitrarily. I agree with you, right? A uh, good example is for example uh, chicken farm, all right? They, they can arbitrarily set the, the trigger point quite high to the point that the, the chicken in the, in a chicken factory is so crowded together right that they are um, it, it really is not not good yeah so but i mean this i i cannot comment on individual farm practice but what i can say is that there is no incentive for a farmer to push this beyond what is uh, feasible because he will not reap the reward of farming. Yeah. I, I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Do you pay attention on the fish welfare because of the market or, or because of the uh, ethics that we have to have yeah okay <laughs> so that, that again you. is a valid question all right so uh, again i cannot comment uh, on individuals uh, ethical interpretation i i can't right? because different people have different belief systems yeah all right Personally, I, I used to farm, all right? I used to farm, and to me, that is important, right? And on a bit, on an ethical basis, not, not on a profit, I have been known to consistently understock compared to other farmers, right? So, uh, but it, that is a decision I, I chose, right? So, yeah. That is a scary scale business plan. Yes. You don't consider the growth, the scary scale. No, no, no. Yeah. So, so the growth is important, right? I mean, at, uh, if they take too long to grow, then it no longer is a business. It's, it's very simple because business needs to have profit. If it, if it doesn't have profit, it is not a business. But you can continue to operate it if it serves another purpose. If uh, the end result is to provide food for the poor, you, you are more than welcome to do it, but it no longer is a business. The very definition of business is that you have to have profit, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, ada lagi? Mahasiswanya? Tuh, dari tadi malu-malu. <laughs> Uh, izin bertanya, perkenalkan nama saya Siti Hanisa dari Pendidikan Biologi. Izin bertanya kepada Mr. Mr. Teh Kim Yu. Nah. 
Um, bagaimana apabila ada masyarakat Indonesia yang tidak siap dengan adanya industri 4.0 ini? Terlebih lagi yang kita tahu beberapa uh, di daerah Indonesia masih mengedepankan budaya. Contohnya di Kepulauan Riau. Nah, bagaimana apabila ada masyarakatnya ini yang uh, bukan teknologi person? Uh, bagaimana menghadapi, uh, bagaimana bila dia tidak siap dengan adanya industri 4.0 ini? Itu saja, terima kasih. So, uh, Siti ask for you about how it uh, traditional people should respond to the the, the 4.0 industry or technology what should should they do because they have a how, how can say that uh, they have a low tech uh, condition so how should what should they do if uh, this kind of technology enter their uh, region maybe so because they are so traditional so um uh, before uh, city, thank you so thank you for your question. To be honest, um, even Singapore, we are not even industry 3.0. We are we are working towards industry 3.5 and then uh, industry 4.0. So when the threat come from overseas, okay, we always believe to um, let's get ready for industry 4.0. First of all, I tell all my students and my colleagues, PPT, people process technology so don't jump into technology first oh i want to buy a robot you know i want to do this you should train your people the mindset first industry 4.0 technology that are good okay you can learn and many times coding nowadays are very easy don't need to like semicolon and all this thing coding coding now is very easy for people so embrace the mindset people train them then process look at your process and try to streamline it make it very efficient ah then mana mana other lobang ah inefficient ah technology don't because of technology you buy technology yeah only adopt technology when you required yeah that's my my view thank you nah jadi jawabannya adalah sebenarnya tidak perlu khawatir karena kita bisa memilih untuk menggunakan teknologi tadi yang penting adalah pertama kita bersiap teknologi ini bisa berguna atau enggak kedua beradaptasi jika memang ada kegunaannya ketiga baru gunakan teknologinya jadi contoh dari seperti ini sebenarnya Jepang bisa lihat bahwa tradisi dan teknologi itu e, berkesinambungan ya jadi enggak mesti tiba-tiba oh saya perlu robot misalnya kan misalnya nih anak semester 2 langsung perlu iPhone berapa gitu padahal pakainya buat WhatsAppan doang dan berteduh di hujan kali ya nah, seperti itu contohnya di ada uh, kemudian teknologi cocok atau enggaknya itu kita pertimbangkan jadi enggak perlu khawatir karena memang lagi-lagi manusia yang mengambil keputusan nah di sini memang uh, tempatnya manusia jangan sampai manusia yang dikendalikan sama kecerdasan buatan tapi kita yang tetap memegang kendali nah untuk ini kita butuh pengetahuan yang sekarang sudah ada yaitu penonton-penonton tentang programming ya kan internet dan sebagainya apapun bidangnya jadi ini bukan hanya milik anak teknik saja tapi semua makanya sekarang dari kecil udah belajar coding gitu kan jangan kidding aja tapi coding juga nah seperti itu kira-kira I think one more question oke okay? sure. sure. satu lagi kalau ada bahasa Inggris lah cowok lah yang muda lah that's one, that's one the right side <laughs> Oke, okay, berarti cowoknya Leto ini hari ini. <laughs> ya, silakan. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I introducing myself. Oke, okay, my name is Ira Handayani. I am study program in aquaculture. I have question to sir uh, Dekem. Hi, Irani, right? So you are famous among the girls, lah. Eh? Sure. <laughs> no problem. Uh, what the what are the obstacles when robots work and what are the biggest disadvantages of robot for humans uh, because I have uh, because I have my brother is uh, study uh, program study is uh, electronic uh, 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 her this is of uh, robots uh, in University of Batam. Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you. If I if I can uh, understand the question correctly, is it the 
disadvantage of robot, is she saying? Yeah. What are the bad things about robot? So now COVID almost endemic, almost like COVID, okay, habis are soon. Huh? People traveling now. A lot of hotel, Pintan Lagoon, maybe Pintan Lagoon don't have. Huh? A lot of hotel now, wow, robot check-in counter. Like, oh, tick, 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 oh, Mr. T, welcome here. So we always have this um, debate on high tech versus high touch. I'm a tourist, I go Pintan Lagoon, happy. Alamak, talking to robot. Sejuk lah, like, tak, tak warm lah, tak, yeah. tak panas lah. So, high tech, wow, bagus. But, tak ada high touch. Some industry, we still need high touch. Like, hello Mr. Tay, hello, yeah, how are you? Then you feel, wah, shook wah lagi ya, shook wah. So, sometimes high tech, a bit cold, so joke, I don't like. I still like high touch, by right, people to people. So that, for me, I think that's a disadvantage of robot. A bit cold, so joke. I hope I answer your question. Perlu saya terjemahkan? Ya, jadi terkadang teknologi tinggi atau high tech juga nggak menyenangkan gitu. Jadi tadi Mr. Kim, uh, Mr. Kim bilang ada high tech, uh, ada high high touch. High touch itu touch sentuhan. Jadi manusia itu terkadang uh, perlu kehangatan dari sesama manusia. Di mana ini tidak bisa sampai saat ini digantikan sama robot. Nah, jadi di di sana tempatnya. Walaupun kalian mungkin nonton film science fiction sudah ada mungkin ya beberapa film yang seolah-olah bisa menggantikan uh, robot beberapa film tahun 2022 ini juga ada tapi sepertinya itu hampir hampir mustahil setidaknya sampai uh, saat ini jadi karena tadi adiknya di elektro ya elektro di Batam nah sebenarnya ini punya keuntungan kakaknya di budidaya adiknya di elektro kolaborasi sekarang itu bidang antar bidang ilmu harus kolaborasi kalau mau maju kalau enggak anak BDP jadi tukang kasih makan anak teknik jadi tukang solder tapi anak BDP, anak sama anak te elektro berkolaborasi, uh, bikin startup teknologi budidaya, jual pemberi pakan otomatis, bikin filter air otomatis, IoT, tinggal kontroli handphone. Nah, hal-hal kayak begini tidak akan kalian dapatkan kalau tidak kolaborasi, masih main di prodi sendiri-sendiri. Nah, punya teman di prodi lain, ajak bareng kerjasama. Nah, karena sudah sesi kita sudah berakhir, untuk itu saya harapkan tepuk tangan yang meriah untuk para narasumber kita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much, Mr. Stephen and Mr. Kim, for your presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, today we already hear the information from both our uh, lecture, uh, Mr. Kim and Mr. Stephen. And thank you for your uh, attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih kepada moderator dan juga narasumber kita pada sore hari ini. Dan hadirin yang berbahagia, selanjutnya kita lanjutkan dengan penyerahan sertifikat. Untuk itu, we would like to please to our speakers to come front to... Yes. And we also invite Bapak Rektor for certificate delivery for the speakers, the moderators, and also for the keynote speakers. Please welcome. The first certificate give by Director of Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji to Dr. Stephen Pongs from Republic Polytechnic of Singapore. And we continue to the second speakers, Mr. Teh Kim Yu. Kita berikan applause yang sangat meriah bagi kita semua pada sore hari ini. Dan kita lanjutkan dengan penyerahan sertifikat kepada keynote speaker. Terima kasih kami ucapkan kepada Bapak Samsul Bahrum, PhD. Dan juga kepada moderator kita pada sore hari ini, Bapak Hengki Irawan. And we continue for the souvenirs delivery from Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji to the representative from the Republic Polytechnic of Singapore. 
Yes, please, uh, Mr. Kami sangat berterima kasih kepada narasumber kita dari Republik Politeknik of Singapore. Kami juga mengundang Bapak Wakil Rektor 2 untuk dapat mendampingi Bapak Rektor berfoto bersama. And we also invite the delegations from the Republic Politeknik of Singapore to take photo together. Once again, we would like to please uh, Miss or Mrs. to come front for the photo session together to memorize our moment in this afternoon. Mungkin kepada fotografer bisa diposisikan untuk membelakangi peserta juga untuk mengabadikan momen bersama seluruh mahasiswa dan mahasiswi Universitas Maritim Raja Ali Haji yang telah sangat antusias mengikuti kegiatan kuliah umum pada sore hari ini. Ya, yeah, we invite seluruh mahasiswa to stand up. to memorize our public lecture with us very great speakers from the Republic Polytechnic of Singapore. And finally, we come to an end of the series of the public lecture with the theme, Food Revolution Industry 4.0 in Food Security. We would like to express our great gratitude to our speakers and all delegations, also the audience attentions, and we also would like to beg your pardon if any of this occasion didn't run properly. Thank you very much for your attention. Good afternoon and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.